Should Ukraine be left to defend democracy mostly on its own? That's what I want to start discussing tonight. We have great guests. We have historian Douglas Brinkley, uh, most recently the author of Silent Spring Revolution, JFK, Rachel Carson, Lyndon Johnson, Richard Nixon, and the Great Environmental Awakening, and retired Army Brigadier General Peter Zwak, who has served as the United States senior defense official and attache to the Russian Federation. Perfect guests. Gentlemen, thank you for being with me, especially in the first week. Thank you, Chris. Congrats on the show. Thank you. General, let me start with you. Um, the idea that the Pentagon says we don't see any sign uh, that they're doing anything like that, except that Russia has been discussing it openly. Uh, where is your mind in terms of what you think Russian posture is towards an existential confrontation and what we should be doing here? Uh, good, good evening. Uh, congratulations on your show, Chris. And um, th this is a very, very, it, this is very, very tricky to speak to. Um, uh, you can rest assured, our nation's can, nation can rest assured that 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 um, that our our um, the Pentagon, our in, in intelligence services are watching very closely, and they're closely tied to our U European allies. Saying that, they are they they uh, uh, the, the it looks like at least overt manifestations of Russian um, deployments, um, um, whether uh, of nuclear weapons, tactical, whatever that they can see and monitor, I, they're not perhaps seeing that. Saying that, that does not mean that plans are in place and, uh, and, and their wheels in motion. Uh, so, so they don't see anything that is visibly offensive uh, more than already you know, the spring-loaded, if you will, nuclear posture uh, that we have with Russia and we've had through uh, all the way back through the Cold War. Mm. So, um, th th so right now they're saying there's nothing that they see untoward to worry about from a, from a physical side, but the rhetoric, Chris, and the, and the talk and, and the aspects, what's going on in Ukraine and the region is something else to talk about. Right. And I will go back to you. Thank you very much. All right, so Douglas, uh, when you look at it, you know, uh, tell me if I'm wrong about like the eerie similarities between the reference, uh, you know, the pivot points and the reference that the president made about Cuba uh, and today, and then reconcile that with his relative lack of urgency in terms of how he's dealing with Ukraine. Well, I look at this as a Joe Biden gaffe. Uh, you don't drop the Armageddon bomb, the A word, in front of a Democratic fundraiser. If you're going to talk about Armageddon in such a casual fashion, it loses its power. Um, and also the Cuban Missile Crisis was 90 miles off American shore. I mean, Russia was building launch sites to put um, ICBMs to blow up all the United States, with the perhaps exception of uh, the Pacific Northwest. The point is that Biden was trying to make is that we're in a really dangerous situation now that Putin may be feeling painted in a corner. He has no exit strategy or off ramp and he may escalate. And that escalation might mean biological or chemical or tactical nuclear weapons in the Ukraine. And Biden is saying, well, if he does that, the whole world's going to blow to smithereens. So I think it was a missed opportunity, a failed moment by uh, President Biden. But I don't want to minimize this very dangerous situation we're in. Chris, I once was given by Nancy Reagan, Ronald Reagan's diaries that he kept every day in the White House. And when he wrote the word Armageddon, I had to look at it at the Reagan Library. Nobody had seen them except Mrs. Reagan. Just seeing a sitting president write the word Armageddon brings uh, fear to you. So for Biden to just kind of unleashing it at this fundraiser, I think, uh, is a disservice and is a, a low leadership moment for him. Look, the reason that... I appreciated that it was said, uh, whether, you know, look, is there a chance that he said it because it's a good way to coax uh, people you're trying to, you know, incentivize to give money uh, to understand the stakes? Uh, yes. Could he have done that in a way that wasn't as existential? Of course. But general, the reason I appreciate it is having been in Ukraine and understanding and being in constant contact with people there, including U.S. veterans who are on the ground there assisting in different ways, they are shocked that America's not doing more because they all believe that this is just the beginning 
of Putin trying to rebuild the Soviet Union. And there is shock, as you know, by many uh, in your chosen career and state of service who think we should be doing a lot more. What do you think? I think that um, uh, President Biden, um, as you mentioned in the opening, um, he was uh, a young adult during the Cuban Missile Crisis. And um, I think that for our generation, and I'm an old core, I started my military career as an intelligence officer uh, in a nuclear capable artillery battalion focused on going and deploying to Germany to stop the Soviet hordes, Warsaw Pact in, 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 uh, in, the, in the folded gap. So it's real, it's, it's serious. We moved on, Chris. This is what is so disappointing um, is for a lot of us that have been in it uh, a, a long time, and I know you have too, um, and my colleague, uh, we had hoped, we thought we had gotten through this when the Soviet Union imploded and uh, everything seemingly uh, in the decade, which I call the lost decade in the 1990s, came and went. And now we are back in this narrative, in this rhetoric. Um, uh, and um, I, I tell young students, um, uh, to try to get a sense of what the Cold War was like. Go, how many of you have watched uh, Dr. Strangelove? Go out and watch it. What's the essence of good satire? It's the truth. Mm -hmm. And lacing all the narrative and everything else is the truism that has never gone away, that we have, both our nations and others, have civilization ending nuclear weapons that basically have been harnessed based on the situation since the end of the Cold War. And even the Soviet Union at that time had a decision-making uh, process, a, a presidium, a politburo that doesn't really exist right now in the persona of, 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 of Vladimir Putin. So yes, maybe, I don't know what the statement was, but I do worry, uh, and I don't say we're going there, but the, the, the nuclear war, God bless, had become, I think, for our younger generations, conceptually, right. concept, and not the and now here we are. visceral reality that we grew up with. Right, and look, I think the frustrating thing here, and again, look, I mean, Douglas is the general, I, you know, we're new, Douglas has known me a long time. Uh, I'm not somebody who's in the panic game uh, or who's always trying to fan the flames of America's involvement abroad, but... Uh, not being involved in Ukraine when they are at the doorstep of defending democracy now and not having back channels in Russia with the Kremlin the way we used to, Douglas, what are the options for the United States? If they're not going to get involved on the ground in Ukraine to keep Russia where they are and make them understand tactically how bad this goes and they're not working back door, then what are we doing? That's the key question. You just raised it. Look, the Cuban Missile Crisis, from an American perspective, is the United States won. We celebrate John F. Kennedy for it. In Russia, it's that Khrushchev lost. Uh, his whole government collapsed after it. But what Kennedy was so worried about Armageddon is that he started back channels right after the Cuban Missile Crisis with Russia, particularly through a journalist, uh, owner of Saturday um, literary review, Norman Cousins, who was the founder of SANE, and Kennedy was calling anti-nuclear activists on the phone, dealing with Dr. Albert Schweitzer, the Nobel Prize winner. And Cousins, unbeknownst to uh, anybody, went and started negotiating with Khrushchev to stop the banning of testing of nuclear weapons. Um, and we got a success. I think it's John F. Kennedy's great moment was the nuclear test ban treaty. So the question, and so we can't even blow up nuclear weapons l legitimately in the atmosphere underwater due to Kennedy and Khrushchev's diplomacy uh, back then. But would Putin use them right now? It's possible. It's unlikely. And I think we just have to trust the CIA Pentagon to keep hyperactive of what's going on there. And meanwhile, I think, I hope, that Biden has cousins like back channel non-governmental -govern organizations trying to figure out a way to de-escalate this because certainly nobody can tolerate any kind of nuclear engagement. General Douglas, thank you both uh, very much. Peter, it's good to have you on the show. I look forward to having you again, General. Uh, General, thank you very much. I appreciate the perspective.